Amen. Let's have our seats. Now, now you can sit. Amen. Hallelujah. Ooh, isn't God good? I like all them little snack packs. I like to open them up all the time. I call them little snack packs. Stay in there. Boy, that's a good word for a weary overcomer. He's thinking about maybe I made a mistake. You know, maybe this is an accident. Then you come along and say, stay in there. Stay in there. Go all through your body. Boy. Amen. <laughs> you, you, you be like one of the uh, gospel poets. I feel like going on. <laughs> Praise his name. All right. Yeah, let's go to Romans chapter 4 in the few more minutes I have left. Uh, I said, well, I was praising the Lord, but your time was clicking. <laughs> Amen. And I said, all right. What can I say? Romans chapter 4. For all the promises in God, in, for all the promises of God in Christ Jesus, uh, uh-huh, well, only if you said that, okay then, all right. For all the promises of God in Christ Jesus are, uh, and amen. amen. Yeah, all right, amen. Thank God for his promises. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Father. Oh, glory to his name. Where shall we start? Let's start with verse 12. I'm looking at those that are here. Are you pretty familiar with this passage of Romans? Verse 12. And the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in these steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had being yet uncircumcised. Somebody should have said glory, hallelujah. Thank you. <laughs> Ooh. Verse 13. For the promise. Can you say for the promise? That he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of of faith. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Glory to God. We got to read 14. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void. Can somebody say, God forbid? God forbid. And the promise made of none effect. Thank you. Because the law worketh wrath. For where no law is, there is no transgression. Right. Therefore, it is a faith Hallelujah. that it might be by grace. Amen. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seeds. Hey, oh, seed. Oh, okay then. That's why you got to have your Bible open. Preacher might get the line up here. <laughs> I said seeds, and y'all just was waiting for the next word. You're supposed to say, if, the, if, if, the, if, if when Jesus was speaking, if they can uh, crack open the ceiling and interrupt him, surely you can interrupt me. Say, preacher. <laughs> it said seed. All right. Amen. Thank you, Father. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to only that which is of the law, right. 
but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Can we give God a praise there? Give him a praise offering there. He's talking about us. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. God is good. Now, I read that to preface our palate for the entree. We cleanse the palate so nothing won't defile the entree. You can get all that the cook put in it. Amen. Christ cooked up a good meal for us this morning so we could break fast properly with the word of God. And I want to refer to our text for this week that we're meditating on since Thursday. God makes promises. And I like the way uh, Pastor Evans used to say that. He said, he said, God. <laughs> yeah, he said, God. We didn't say man. <laughs> we didn't say the U.S. government. He said, God makes promises. Somebody should say, thank God. <laughs> to them that are related to him. Anybody related to God this morning? So you should at least have one promise. Because God makes promises to them that are related to him. Before you get real excited. And have a working knowledge, a working knowledge of him and his son. Amen. Yeah. Now, I reference this um, because um, it said we should consider the steps of my father Abraham. And, uh, and I went back to consider uh, Abraham and promises to see if I can get my steps adjusted to the progenitor, Abraham himself. So I went to Genesis. I believe chapter 15, and I'll start with verse 1. As you're turning, you can write it down and you can read it later for the meditation. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Okay. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, to me, thou hast given no seed. <laughs> and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. Now, Abraham was thinking about what God said to him in, in Genesis. Now, the Lord, uh, uh, Genesis chapter 12. Now, the Lord has said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred. And from thy fathers out into a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee. And I will make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. And so Abraham had a great concern for how he's going to become a great nation. Seeing that uh, he don't have no seed. And all he got is Eliezer around. Of Damascus. And... Um, it's on his heart. What are you going to do about this? You see? So God gave him a promise. You see? And uh, if you turn to Hebrews 6, 17, let's talk about God and his promise uh, right. before I run off. And let's work from the God side first. Uh -huh. uh, in Hebrews chapter 6, uh, Jesus is Lord. Let's see if we can do a little background work. And let's start with uh, verse 13. 
For when God made promise to Abraham, we did say God. All right. All right. Because he could swear by no greater, <laughs> it was no one greater than him, no one immutable like him, all powerful like him. There was no one that was impeccable, had integrity, holy. There was no one that was unchanging. There's no one that had the power to make sure that their word was not broken. He looked high and low. He couldn't find nobody to, to work with. Couldn't find nobody greater than him that he could use. So what did he do? Hallelujah. He, because he could swear by no greater, he swear by himself. All right now. We talking about all powerful God. Immutable. Don't change. He's not like me. Say something today and change tomorrow. He got power to stand behind him. He's righteous. Amen. He's just. Glory to God. He's not going to say nothing, not do it. That's just how God is. That's how great he is. He's so great he had to create beasts to praise his greatness because you can't brag on him because he's too great to be bragged on. When you praise him, you just tell him the truth. They have to fall out all the time and say, holy, holy, holy. <laughs> see, if we do that by me, I'd be bragging, you see. His immutable power is standing behind his word. Now, this is the God we're talking about. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swear by himself, saying, saying surely, Blessing, I will bless thee, and multiplying, I will multiply thee. And so, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Say, patiently endured. Patiently. For men like Pastor Brown and verily swear by the greater. <laughs> and the oath for confirmation is to them the end of all strife. When God willing more abundantly to show the heirs of promise, the immutability. Can we say immutability? immutability. Well, y'all didn't say that like you understood it. Big word, but it's for a great God. The immutability. Thank you, Heavenly Father. He's immutable. Thank you. Nobody exists like him. The immutability of his counsel. Confirm it by oath. Now, why would you need to confirm God's immutability counsel with an oath? Thank you. That by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie. Now, think about your promise now. It's impossible for God to lie. Then he came back and backed it up <laughs> with his immutability. Thank you. And swore, oh, hallelujah. Boy, it's tight now. Now think about your promise now. Let me think about mine. Who can stop God from doing what he said? Where are they at? So let them stand up now. <laughs> That's how you can talk when God give you a promise. You see? Excuse the little phraseology, but it put rockets in your pockets. It put D's in your pocket. Because God tell you he's going to do it. If he make a promise to you, it's good. It's backed by his power. His immutability. And an oath. Glory to God. We're in God willing more abundantly, he wants us to know, to show unto the heirs of the promise, any heirs of the promise today. Well, y'all better read your Bible again. He's talking about us now. <laughs> Look at this. He's talking about us. <laughs> We're God willing, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of the promise the immutability of his counsel confirmed it by oath. Okay. 
that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope that is set before us. Which hope we have as a anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and, and which enters into, into the, within the veil. Now that's the God who gave us our promise. It's impossible for him to lie. It's rooted in his essence, or as the Overcomers Conference said, in his nature. It's impossible for God to lie. He got all power to back up what he said. Amen. Hallelujah. He got all eternity to work his promise out. Amen. He said, well, there ain't no you can reach the small clause down there. Uh, at the end of the day, the promise is no good. His promise is good as long as he's around. Right. And he's always around. Amen. Now, what did you ask your name? What did you do with that promise God gave you? Now, what you need to do with that promise, what I need to do, Sister Brown, with that promise, amen? I need to go back to the one who gave it to me and say, uh, uh, where, is the, where is the seed of your promise at? <laughs> See, he talked to God. He said, now you said I'm going to be an heir of everything, I'm going to be a nation. Okay. Uh, where is the seed? <laughs> I'm going to be a nation and I don't even have a seed. I got this big old grown man running around here. Sometimes we got to go talk to God so he can talk to us. Talk to us about who he is. You see. And God humbled himself. And he talked to Abraham and, 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 and he told him. He said, uh, uh, Abraham, it's, it's going to be all right now. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him saying, this shall not be thine heir. So get that out your head. All right. We through with that now. We don't talk about that no more. Okay. Saying this shall not be thine heir. But he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And uh, I guess he thought that didn't include Sarah. But it did. If he knew that he wouldn't have uh, been fooling with Hagar. But we'll talk about that later. Right. And he brought forth uh, and he brought him, I'm putting and he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now towards heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thou see me. Now, don't get to messing with God. Don't stir him up now. And he believed in the Lord and he counted it to him for righteousness. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur a child. These don't think you left on your own. I brought you out. You didn't know how to leave. Right, I had to bring you out. Right, you were walking like a Mesopotamian. You were looking at the moon and the stars and all the other stuff. I had to swoop down and get you to bring you out. And you questioning me? Come on now. God said, I brought you out your mother's womb. You didn't bring yourself out. And you don't think I can keep my promise to you? I started you with a one cell, little, split you in the four cell, 16 cell, 32 cell. Uh, you, you were looking like a little cashew for a minute. <laughs> and brought you on out. Glory to God. You talking about a promise, look at yourself. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. He told him to look toward heaven and tell the stars. Not count them, tell them too. If thou be able to number them. <laughs> if you can get to all of them. And he said unto him, So sons I see he be. And he believed in the Lord and he counted it to him for righteousness. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur Chaldees to give this land to thee, to give this land to inherit it. And he said, now, this is what a lot of people are scared to say. And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know 
Now I can hear somebody saying, you don't question God. <laughs> God said it, you believe it, get on down the road. But we see the steps of our father Abraham, he wasn't there yet. He staggered out the promise of God through unbelief. He, didn't, he never staggered about it because believing was in his heart all along. Amen. He believed all the time in the promise. He didn't stagger out the promise of God through unbelief. Now it says here, he said, Lord, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? Lord, how shall I know your promise is going to become true in my life? See, and this is what he did. Glory to God. And he said unto him, take me a heifer of three years old and a she-goat of three years old and a ram of three years old and a turtle dove and a young pigeon. And he took unto him all these and divided them in the midst and laid each piece against another, but the birds divided he not. And when the, when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abram drove them away. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, and horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, No of a surety, can we say, No of a surety, that thou seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterward they shall come out with great substance. Right, and thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. Well, he gave him more than he asked for, didn't he? Thank you. But in the fourth generation they shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. And it came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and, and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. In that same day, the Lord made a covenant. Can we say covenant? With Abram. Saying, unto thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt unto the great river Euphrates. The Kenites and the Kezanites and the Kadamites and the Hittites and the Pezzarites and the Redfield and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Gergesites and the Jebusites. See, God gives us a covenant. And we heard bishops speak a few words. And a covenant contains promises and facts. And what the Holy Spirit comes to do through our studying and learning is to convert those facts and those promises into an experience. Amen. But God wants you to know that he'll stoop down to our level to let you know and cut a covenant with you that what I said I'm going to do. He didn't have to do that. And that's why we got to study the covenant that God made with us. But the promise that he made to is, 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 is rooted in his nature, in his essence of who he is. He cannot change. He cannot lie. He must do what he say. Because he's God. And when your promise come up worrying you, talking about where is my, where am I supposed to, where am I at? You just sit back and think about the steps that Abraham took. And then you walk in those steps of that faith of our father Abraham. What does that mean to walk in those steps? of that faith by Father Abraham. Abraham was committed to pleasing God. That's what it's saying to her. He was committed to pleasing God. And when you're committed to pleasing God, God will come snatch you and take you where he wants you to go. And lead you all out your journey through all this place because you want to please him. That's what it means that faith, that faith means 24-7 you want to please God. For without faith it's impossible to please God. Right. Oh, yes. Well, I said as clear as I can. Right. Forgive me for getting so excited, thinking that you were as excited as I was. Went over four minutes. Hallelujah. 
Anybody want to believe God for the promise today? Come on now, you got to do better than that. Look at you. Don't sit back on it. Hallelujah. Don't release your spirit today. Work with that grace that's in the place. Hallelujah. Don't work with the grace. Don't be ashamed of your name. You got to seize it. So that's my word for today. Don't be out play like smooth as a bug in the rug. Go on and show out for the Lord. We got, if you get too beside yourself, we'll escort you to the prayer room. <laughs> but work with this grace. Oh, yeah. with Hallelujah. <laughs> Live, work with it. Be strong in it. Mul multiply it. Yes, Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Well, I said as clear as I can. Any uh, 